Hi everyone, thank you guys for your support. I really appreciate you guys commenting, liking the videos, uh, sharing and subscribing if it resonates. I love hearing your stories as well. I'm going to get right into the reading, so whatever the cards want to say, keep in mind that I do channel multiple energy groups on here, so this may or may not be for you. Only take it if it resonates. Never try to force it to fit. Okay, let's see what the cards want to say. Let's see what the current storyline is for someone out there. And as always, I do private readings as well. My email is dragonenchantress at awol.com. And my email address is right below in the description box. Got the Empress, the Eight of Swords, the Page of Swords. Hmm. I'm hearing the worst is over. Let's see. Because it's like you're the empress, but you don't realize you're the empress. You know what I mean? It's almost like you're really abundant. Like you have blessings in your life now, but it's like you're not recognizing the blessings that are in front of you or the blessings that are coming in. It's like you're so... Eight of Swords is someone, it's like she's blindfolded. It's like you're 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 so focused on the swords that you can't see that your castle, your your home, your abundance, everything is right there in front of you. You're waiting for the other shoe to drop. I feel like you're waiting for information to come in. Um and it might honestly have to do with childhood trauma. Like you might be I feel like you're waiting for the worst to happen when it comes to money, when it comes to love. You have some kind of pattern here. This could even be a past life pattern. So, oh, sorry. I thought you guys could see that. This could even be a past life pattern. Like, for example, you might have gone through poverty in your past life. You might have been homeless in your past life. And this lifetime, maybe you really hold on to finances more than most. Like you really panic financially more than most because of that past life where you went through that. Or maybe even in childhood, you went through poverty and it's affecting you currently. Whatever this is, your spirit guides are trying to say like the worst is over. You've already gone through it. You've already wrapped up that karmic cycle, those karmic lessons there's no need to repeat it, but it's almost like you're kind of pulling this energy into your your new beginning with you. Um, for others, it could be love. It could be, it, again, it could be past life. It could be also be childhood wounding, though, childhood experiences. It could even be a mix of both. It could be things that happened in your past life that you repeated that karmic cycle in childhood, but you've already wrapped that cycle up Uh you know, years ago, it's not something that needs to be repeated. But it could be like, uh, you know, toxic or abusive relationships or heartbreak. It's like there's some kind of soul contract that I feel like you need to end. Or if you haven't, for some, it's like you really just need to sit down and actually end it like you need to cut the cords. For others, I feel like you need to like it's already ended by itself, but it's almost like residual energy where even though it's ended, it's like you're not recognizing that the worst is over. You know, it's it's like if there's this childhood wounding or this this poverty mindset or maybe a certain pattern you had in relationships, it's like you're going into your new beginning expecting that to happen again, expecting this trauma or this pattern to repeat itself and you're not recognizing that you're actually the empress. You are abundant. You have, this is over. Whatever this is, it's meant to be over with. So don't, don't bring it into your new beginning with you. Let's look more into this. And I don't feel like it's one specific person that your spirit guides are telling you to let go of. It feels like either a pattern with multiple people, like maybe you had a specific type of person that you were dating. Like, let's say you always went for people that cheated on you with third parties, or you always went for people that were a little bit, you know, toxic or, you know, again, with like the poverty, it's, it, there's something here that it's just, it doesn't need to be repeated, but let's, let me see. Bear with me guys. Seven of Pentacles. Ten of Wands. The High Priestess. Tell me about the Seven of Pentacles. I feel like it's saying you need to break down, but not in a bad way. It's it's almost like you need to 
surrender and release the control issues and release whatever this is. It's like you're trying to... Let me see. Let me see what this Lot of Pentacles is trying to tell me here. Hold on. Bear with me, guys. Yeah, for some, it's like a third-party scenario. It's like you're expecting that and you're almost... It's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Where even though you've learned the karmic lessons with, you know, third-party relationships, you've wrapped that cycle up. You're not willing to engage in third-party relationships any longer. I feel like if you keep holding on to that energy so tightly, it's almost like you're just going to attract men or attract women who will end up cheating on you again, even though that doesn't need to happen again. It's like you already learned whatever you were meant to learn from that. There's no sense of it happening again. Um, tell me more about this. Yeah, for some it's poverty. That's, that's another confirmation about the poverty. Yeah, but it's like you have the Ten of Pentacles, like you have abundance. It's it's like you're caught up in this illusion. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if the Seven of Cups actually comes out here. Because it's like you're caught up in this illusion. It's like you're the Empress, you're the High Priestess, you're the Ten of Pentacles. You are abundant, you are a powerful manifester. You have, like the world is your oyster right now. Like you could manifest almost anything that you want right now. You are really coming into your power right now, but it's almost like I'm actually coming back to this was a few years ago that I had a, a I'm just talking about myself for a minute because I, I feel like some of you might relate to this. Where whenever I would have anxiety attacks, I had a friend that was very psychic and we would we would, you know, do psychic readings for each other sometimes. And whenever I would like get anxiety attacks and I would feel uncomfortable I always felt like my vibration was low and she's like, no, actually your vibration is incredibly high right now. You're just not used to being this high up. You're not used to being on this level. It's unfamiliar to you. So, you know, actually when you feel great might be, you know, when you're low vibrational and when you're feeling bad, it might be, you know, you might actually just be at like a new level that you're not familiar with. And I'm not saying that's the case with everyone. And I'm not saying like, I mean, you shouldn't feel bad if you're at a high level, of course, but it's like one of those scenarios where it's like there's some kind of fog or some kind of illusion around you where it's like you have all this power, you have all this abundance around you that's yours for the taking and you're not seeing it. You're just, your your vision is clouded. It's like you're seeing, you know, you're, you're just looking at the past. You're looking at things that you've gone through in the past and not seeing what's right in front of you. Tell me more about this. This could even be a relationship. Like you could even have a really good person right in front of your face and it's like you're not you're not recognizing it because you're looking for the worst in them or you're expecting the worst of them. Or it's unfamiliar to you. It's new to you and you don't know what to do with it. Tell me more about this energy. Ace of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles. It's like someone that's drowning in like, you know, one or two feet of water. And it's like you're panicking and panicking and panicking. And if you just stop for a minute, if you just stop, you know, flailing about and, and freaking out and you just you stand there for a minute. And I know it's easier said than done. But if you just stop for a minute and ground yourself, you know, maybe do an uncrossing ritual. If you do spell work, just clear your energy, go out in nature, um, connect with nature, ground yourself. You know, you're going to be like, oh, wow, what was I panicking for? This is like, this water is like one, one, one feet, one foot, ah, one foot deep, two feet deep. It's, I can easily stand in this. I'm good. Like, what was, what was I worried? So what was I worried about? You know, it's like this tiny little thing, like a tiny little insect and you're freaking out about it, but you can just squash it. It's, it's not as big as you think it is. I feel like for some of you, there's also an issue that you're dealing with right now and you're kind of freaking out about it. And it's really, it's not as powerful and scary and big as you think it is. Yeah, you're being balanced out because it's almost like you can build something here. You have an oppor you have opportunities in front of you financially and love just in general. And and some part of you is almost like 
I don't want to say you feel undeserving, but it's almost like you, you feel like, like it's like a trick, like it's some kind of trap or you feel like, let's say that you've dated, you know, you've only dated men or women that have cheated on you. And, you know, you're, you've wrapped that karmic cycle up. You've learned to stand up for yourself. You've learned not to tolerate those situations. And now you're able to manifest someone who's, who's going to be loyal. Like you're, you, you have to understand the thing about perspective too, your perception. Have you ever seen someone that's with a guy or with a girl and they just think that that person, like a really good person and they have like a great childhood upbringing and you see them with their husband or wife and they just think that's like the most attractive person on the planet to them and you're looking at them like, what? Like, no, that person's so physically unattractive. It's your perception. It's because of childhood upbringing. You're, you're not resonating with that energy. You're not resonating with someone that's treating you well. You're not physically attracted to someone that treats you well. You know, 90%, what is it? Like 90% of, of communication, I think it is, is body language. It's your type is going to change is what I'm saying. But I think for some of you, it's like you're not going to be used to your type changing. You're going to be like, you know, it's like you're, you're, you're not going to know what to do with this new person. You're like, what is this energy? I'm not used to not being cheated on or not being abused. It's like, what do I, I'm not used to finding someone like this attractive. Um, it's basically just don't hold on to the familiar, like allow these changes to come in. Allow your type to change. If you've been going for the same person over and over and over again, you know, same man or same women, but in different bodies, it's time for that type to change. Allow those changes. Don't hold on to the past. Don't hold on to, you know, the familiarity. Um, And it doesn't mean I'm, I'm not, I would never tell anyone to go against their emotions. Like you feel what you feel. You can't force yourself to love someone or be attracted to someone that you're not attracted to. But, and if you feel upset, like let yourself be upset, let yourself feel those emotions. But I'm just saying if, if your spirit guides are leading this change naturally, like you naturally find yourself talking to someone new that wouldn't be your normal type, like let it flow naturally. Don't, you don't have to try to force yourself to be drawn to them, but if you're naturally drawn to them, don't sabotage and run and freak out just because it's, it's not what you're used to. Or, you know, assume the worst about this person or, or not know what to do with someone who's drama free or who doesn't cheat on you. You know what I mean? Um, same with poverty. If you have like a poverty mindset and now it's like out of nowhere, you have a really high paying job or you get you, you have this abundance coming in. Don't sabotage yourself. Don't don't feel like you did something sneaky to get there or it's almost like imposter syndrome that I'm getting from some of you guys. It's almost like with this new love or new career, um, could even be going to school for some of you. It's like you're starting a new hobby. It's like you, you have a lot of new energy coming in. And some of you guys almost have this like imposter syndrome where you're like, like, how is this for me? Are you sure you, are you sure you wanted to choose me? Are you sure you didn't want to date that other girl? Like, or this other, or the other guy? Like, are you sure you wanted me for the job? Like, did I, did I lie to get the position? Did I do something sneaky? It's like, no, this is for you. This is, it's, it's for you. You know what I mean? Get used to that. Get, get, demand more out of life. Strive for more out of life. I know it's easier said than done. But, you know, your spirit guides are helping you get there. They're helping you build this. They're, they're bringing this temperance energy in, balancing things out. And with the chariot here as well. Tell me more about this. What are the final messages, actually? I mean, I think we, you know, you guys get the, the overall gist of it is just, you know, don't sabotage yourself. Flow with these changes, even if they're uncomfortable. Look at your subconscious patterns, too. Look at what needs to change. Do the shadow work. Tell me more about this. Nine of Pentacles, Four of Cups, Death, the Hermit, and the Sun. All right. I 
I feel like you were being rejected from certain things, but it was like a blessing in disguise. It was just things that maybe were not suiting you. Because I feel like you just went through like hermit mode where you were alone for a very long time. But you were actually going through like death and rebirth. You were going through some kind of transformation, which is leading you to the sun. The, you know, one of the most positive cards in the deck. The, po the sun is just, you know, happiness, warmth, light. It's things being illuminated. It's like you're coming out of this, this phase, this period of time. I feel like you've been in limbo. You know, I think you've been kind of confused and lost because it's like you've been in limbo. It's like you're not resonating with the old life anymore. You're not resonating with being mistreated you're not resonating with people from your past um that took you for granted or neglected you or you know physically or mentally hurt you or whatever it is that they did you're not res you're not resonating with like minimum wage low paying jobs or managers that take you for granted you're not resonating with poverty you're not resonating with being in the dark you're not resonating with any of those and I say in the dark, I mean, I mean, as in, you know, not knowing what's going on around you, you're not resonating with those energies anymore. But you've kind of been in limbo, you've been in this in between phase where you're getting out of that you're transitioning away. But there's like this whole in between phase where it's just kind of like nothingness where it's like the world is your oyster, like you have to rebuild, you know, where it's almost like a blank slate, but it's kind of scary when you have that blank slate, blank slate, because then it's like, it just feels empty. It just feels like, sorry, it just feels like there's nothing there. Cause I'm seeing like a, like a big white room, like filled with lights, but there's like nothing in the room. There's not furniture. There's just nothing. It's just like a room full of lights. And that's where you're at right now. And I think that's like freaking some of you out. Cause like on a spiritual mental level, it's like, that's where you are. And I think it's freaking you out because it's like, you're like, where is everything? Like where, like, I want something, I need something in here. And I think your spirit guides are saying like, you have this empty room to fill with whatever you want. What kind of furniture do you want? What kind of paint do you want on the walls? Um, this could literally be about de decorating a house. Like if you just bought a house, it's like, make it beautiful, make it your own, make it your sanctuary don't ask other people. It's like, it's up to you. Do whatever you want. It doesn't matter how weird it is. Go buy some, you know, crazy, strange artwork. If that's what resonates with you, like make it your own. Um, but I think for like 90% of you, it's like metaphorical where it's like this empty room. Um, and you're panicking cause nothing's in there, but it's like, it's up to you to bring, to bring in this new energy, to bring in what you want. It's a blank slate for you to have whatever kind of life you want. There's, there's not like a right or wrong answer. It's like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do for work? What do you, what kind of person do you want to date? Manifest it, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I know the in-between phase can be scary, but it's like, don't go back to the familiar or to the past. Um, cause you're, you're not there anymore. You don't resonate with that anymore. Don't go back with to that just because you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. You know, it's almost like you guys are going through this tunnel and you, you can't quite see the light. So some of you are kind of wanting to just go back because you know, you know, the 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 beginning of the tunnel is familiar to you. You know what's there. It's it's familiar. It's easy to understand, but it's it's kind of like keep going through that tunnel. Um, you know, what do you what do you want in that room? What do you what do you want to manifest? I think some of you too are almost um what is that quote? There's a, there's a quote with change comes. I think it's like change comes not from destroying the old, but from building the new. So it's like, if you quit smoking or you quit drinking or you quit, you know, you cut out toxic friendships, family members, um, you quit that minimum wage job. It's like, you have to have replacements at some point for those things. You know, if you quit your job, you, you got to line something else up. You have to have a new way to make income. If you leave those friends and family members behind, it's like you can be alone for a while, but sooner or later, you do need to go out and manifest better people, higher quality people. You can't just be alone because then it's like you're going to fall back to those old patterns sooner or later because you're, there's nothing to replace it, you know? Same with like quitting a drug or quitting an addiction. It's like you need, there needs to be a hobby, an outlet, something that brings that passion, that spark back into your life. So it's not just, you know, emptiness that that eventually you 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 guys know what I'm saying it's like you guys are navigating that emptiness and your spirit guides are saying don't 
don't fall back into old patterns because you don't want to sit with the emptiness. You, you need to bring in the new energy. That change is going to come with bringing in the new energy, manifesting what you want. You have a, you have a blank slate in front of you right now, so you have the chance to do that, which is, you know, not everyone gets that. I mean, everyone can have that, I think, but it can be more, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to get there. So, so yeah, sit with that emptiness and, um, and navigate through it and, and keep moving forward with, you know, the chariot, the sun kind of energy here. Um, Some of you are almost changing your type too when it comes to relationships. It's like you're not wanting the emperor anymore. You're wanting, um, and the emperor I usually see as positive, but I think in this context, it's almost someone that's maybe too controlling, too rigid, too too stuck in their ways. Um, and you're wanting to end those cycles and you're wanting to be with someone who's emotional, who's open, who's vulnerable, king and queen of cups. So... I mean, overall, it's actually a really good energy here. You you have a lot of opportunities right in front of you if you can just get past that fog and and see what's you know see what's around you. Um, anyway, I hope this helps someone. I'm gonna go ahead and put this out. And I don't usually do readings like this. Like I'm not one of those like positive vibes only channels. Like it's not usually me. But I mean, this is what came out. This is this is the this is what the the cars your spirit guides wanted to say. So. Thanks for watching.